All right, when we talk about relations in section 5.1, Foundations of Math 10, this is going to be on page 256 is where it starts. Okay, When you think about uh, a relation, you might think about a relative. Okay, So a relative of yours, like your mom or your dad or your sibling or something like that. A relative is someone that is connected to you in some definable way. All right, A relative is connected oops, connected to you please everyone be writing these notes down okay connected to you in a definable way we're talking about we're talking about you and you know another person there is some definable way that you guys are related, okay? So, uh, here we go, for you. Who's that in your life? Well, it's spelled with No, it's not. It's spelled with a Y. Yeah. Oh, okay, if, if it, let's just say okay. it was spelled with an I. I, I think and you're wrong, but... And two N's? No, I think you're wrong. Well, <laughs> Okay, so... Let's just say, let's just say that you have a mother that is spelled like this, which I seriously doubt. I mean, I think I know how to spell your mother's name. It is a joke, I'm joking. Okay, good job. Laugh, haha. Uh -huh. Okay, so the definition of how you are related to this person is your mom. I should have just said this is some random person that has a similar name to your mom, that's what I should have said. But your mom, this is the definition of how you're related, right? Okay? Other relations have other definitions, right? So you'd have you know, your cousin, or your sibling, or something like that. So when you think about relations and representing relations, we are basically going to show how two things are connected. Okay? Now, we could talk about you and your sister, right? And you and your sister would be related to this person in the same way, right? And maybe you say you have, uh, you have another, uh, maybe you have a grandmother or a grandmom. You might say, wow, this is in some form another mom. So you have a set here, and maybe a set here. Or maybe somebody has two moms or something. But the bottom line is, is that just like we relate two things uh, in real life by some definable, you know, explanation, we can do the same thing with, with other objects. For example... If we have the letters, or the numbers, or, well, we can do letters, A, E, I, O, and U, okay? What are those? Those are vowels, okay? So these are specific letters of the alphabet that are vowels, okay? So those are vowels. Those are connected, right? This set and that set, they're connected by the fact that these are vowels, just like you and your mom are related. What about, um, what about if I have, okay, um, this one, this set, okay, this set of words, all right, this set of word is related to this set of words okay now we're kind of getting into m more of the connection between you know different items all right so apple orange and pear and over here orange green and red how are those two sets of words related, do you think? What would be the explanation? Okay, yeah, these colors over here on the right are the colors of these fruits. Very good. So, the explanation in words as to how these are related, you might put something like this set has the color, right? of this. So, an apple would have the color of red. Orange of the color orange. Pear, the color green. 
All right. Now you might say, well, I've got a, I've got a green apple. Okay. Well, apple can go to green, just like pear can go to green, and maybe nothing goes to red. But another way we could show this, how the connections are, is with arrows. So an apple is red. An apple also could be green. So it is possible to have more than one arrow coming from one item in the set, right? And you may have something like this. And you may have more than one arrow going to one of the items in this set. So this is one of the ways that we can represent a relation, okay? So the description of how they're related, we can write that in words. And we can use these arrows to connect them, okay? So this is an arrow diagram. Arrow diagram, that's what this is. You've got your sets of items or elements. They're actually called, in math they're called elements of a set. So let's, uh, I know this is getting a little bit messy, so let me clean this up a bit. Okay. So each of these are elements, okay, orange, green, and red, those are elements of a set. Okay. This whole thing right here would be the uh, set, oh, okay, that's a set. And what else do you need to know here for diagram set element? relation. So this would be a description of the relation, I guess. Okay. The relation. Description. Okay, that's, that's what an arrow diagram sort of looks like. What's another example for an arrow diagram? You kind of got that, you guys? Do another another example here. Let's say we have um, uh, let's see. Oh, is that I or E? China should know that. I try not to think about Winnipeg too much. No. It looks like it looks a little wrong. Winnipeg or Winnipegish. Winnipeg. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, what else are we going to do? Vernon. Um, oh, here's one. Salmon arm. Salmons don't even have arms. Weird. Anyways, what am I going to put over here? I'm going to put... Some of it, two sets. Okay, now looking at those sets, what might the relation between this set of elements and this set of elements be? What's the relation? Yes, yes. Um, so we might say, if we start with this one, we have cities are located in the province of. That might be a way to describe that. So are located in the province of. Okay, so this is this is how we're going to relate. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use arrows to connect the proper elements with each other. So Winnipeg, we would draw an arrow to Manitoba. Regina, draw an arrow to Saskatchewan. Vernon to BC. Whoa. Vernon to BC. And Salmon Arm. Does anyone know where Salmon Arm is? It's actually not in Ontario. I was fooling you. It's in BC. So there is no arrow to Ontario. Why? Because in this list over here, in this set, there's no cities that are in Ontario, so we can't draw an arrow there. Okay, is everyone getting that? Is that, that okay? So, these are arrow diagrams. 
arrow diagrams. <clears throat> Ordered pairs. Okay, this is another way to express relationships. Now, we do this all the time when we talk about the coordinate plane, <laughs> right? When we're talking about points on a coordinate plane, this is what we use. Okay, if this is 3, 4, that's an ordered pair, an ordered pair of numbers. This 3 represents the x value, right? 1, 2, 3. And the 4 represents the y value. And so we know about ordered pairs. But did you know that you could express relations with other sets of elements in ordered pair fashion as well? For example, you could do this. Regina, comma, Sask. That looks familiar, doesn't it? That's an ordered pair. That's a city with its province. Right? Winnipeg with Manitoba. MB. I don't even know how they... How do you represent Manitoba as MB? Yeah. Anyways. Okay, tell them a writer's man. Oops. Uh, okay, so on, so on. Right? Salmon Arm, BC. Toronto, Ontario. Ordered pairs. Okay? We could also do apple, red. You could do apple, green. Right? Now we can have the same the same element matched with a different element in, in uh, the other set. But uh, anyways, this is how you would write an ordered pair. So numbers are the most common way you see ordered pairs used. Alright? Any questions? Ordered pairs. You can have numbers or words. So another way we can represent relations is by a graph. And I've started making this graph here. On a graph, we'll have some kind of vertical axis and a horizontal axis. Because we'll be just comparing two variables or two uh, sets of, um, of elements, we'll just have kind of two aspects to the graph here. Now, down here I have the months of the year. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And up here, I'm comparing those months with amount of snowfall. Now, if we generate some random graph here, and this being, um, uh, you know, centimeters up here, in January, we may get some snow, right? It's in the middle of winter here. So we may get, I don't know, let's say something like 11 centimeters. Now, there's certain type of graphs called bar graphs or histograms. So a histogram is a fancy name for a bar graph. And that's what we'll draw here. You also know that there's line graphs and different things like that. But you'll see this a lot too. Snowfall. Uh, February, okay? We may get a similar amount. Let's say in this particular year, this is what we got. March, very little. April, quite a bit less. May, virtually nothing. July and June and July, nothing. August, nothing. September, we got a little bit. October, a little bit more. November, it just dumped. And December, another huge pile of snow we got there. And so what you can see is how we relate the months of the year with the amount of snowfall is by a graph. And so if you could, you could pick any month, like October, and from the graph, even though this is just hand-drawn, you could have a pretty good guess of how much snow fell in October. And you might guess, hey, that's about maybe three, three or four centimeters, not much, all right? And so on. But this is a graph relating to variables. Usually um, numbers or quantities we relate, you could do, and you might see colors as well, and I'll do this just real quick, but you could do the apple, the orange, and the pear. You could do that thing as well. And for some reason, if you do a histogram, you know, we can do it, right? You can have, like, red here. You can have, you know, orange here. And you can have green here. There's problems, though, right? And here's some of the problems. Um, if an apple is red and it's green, how do you do both of them? <laughs> I mean, this is a bit of a bit of a trouble. When do you do this? And what does that mean? Or the other thing is, the other thing that's awkward is when you display the relations like this with a graph, what that's communicating is that somehow the pear has a larger quantity than the apple. But really, if we're just talking about colors, that could be a bit deceiving, right? If you saw a graph like this, you would say, way to go pear. For some reason, the pear is in the lead. 
or we have a lot of something associated with the pear because you see this huge bar here versus the pitiful little apple right over here, right? But that doesn't make sense, right? You know, colors, this color over that color. There's no quantity really involved. It's a qualitative thing. So that's why we could, but you probably wouldn't use a histogram for something like this in this case. Okay? You got that? So usually when we're talking about quantities. All right, the uh, final thing is, the uh, final way to show a relation is, um, uh, you know, just by a chart, chart form. So let's just put this chart. And it's gonna, this is going to seem pretty obvious to you. But here's an example. A chart has two columns if we're comparing two things, right? You might want to uh, uh, label each one. So this is, let's say this is the fruit over here. And this is its color. Just like, you know, sometimes we do when we have graphs, we have this, right? X, Y. We call this a table of values. It could also be called a chart, comparing X and Y. Right, or a chart. Let's let's do this actually as well. You'll see this as well. Chart or a table. Okay, let's, let's put both of those on there. Because this is a table of values. This is a chart. Um, you might call this a table as well though. So let's say we have apple, pear, orange, so on. And then the color is over here. Now what you do, if it's not an arrow diagram, if it's a chart, you would actually put the colors kind of right beside the... Um, Right, right beside each other. Just like the X and Y, the 1 and the 2 obviously go together in this. And the apple and the red go together here. Yes, it's a little bit more difficult if there are two colors associated with the apple. You'd have to list the apple again down here, which you could. Okay, so those go together. Apple can be red, apple can be green. Pear, I mean, we'll, we'll just say green for the sake of it. And orange orange. So that is a chart or table. If there's more than one color associated with a fruit, you have to rewrite that. So you see it in two different spots. Okay? So that's the quick lesson on how to express relations. Those are the different ways. We just go back and, and review this. An arrow diagram, okay, comparing two sets. We actually draw arrows from one element in one set to another element in another set. Ordered pairs are another way we could express relationships. A graph, we could express relationships that way. And in a simple chart or table. Okay?